Hey guys, I'm Chrissy. I'm part of the team here at C3 Church Oxford Falls in Sydney. Today I want to chat to you about keys and also about chord progressions and what you play behind a speaker, behind a meeting leader, just in those moments when no one else is playing in the band. So I want to give you a couple of tips and then we're just going to launch into a few progressions that I find that I've I find myself playing quite a lot and just good things that if you're a bit stuck on what to play, these are great progressions for you. So here's four things that I just want to point out before I launch into this. Number one, I want to say I always keep it from the middle to low register. And I do that for a couple of reasons. One, it sounds nicer. Um, two, as soon as I start playing up here, it sounds, it stands out. It's going to stand out. So as soon as I play up there and the speaker's talking here, I always try and stay below the speaker's pitch. Because if I start playing up here and the speaker's pitch is like, you know, if I'm up there and the speaker's pitch is there, whatever I play, it doesn't matter how nice it is, is going to stand out. So I always make sure I try and like, you know, I, I want to be in unison with them. I want to be in harmony with whatever they're doing. And I don't want it to be something that people are like, what's that keyboard player playing? Even if it's good, it's not the point. I'm not trying to stand out. I'm trying to fit in with what they're playing and enhance it. So I always stay down to this lower register. Uh, I would say as well, I keep my voicings as close together as possible. So I'm not jumping around the keyboard because, I mean, it, obviously there's a million way you can, ways that you can play a chord, but I'm making sure that I keep it as simple as possible, that I'm limiting movement in my right hand. The only thing really that I move, move a lot is my left hand to change the bass notes because essentially you become the bass player when there's no one else playing. So I'm just changing my left hand and I'm making sure that my right hand voicings uh, are just minimal changes. So you'll see that when I show you some progressions soon. And um, the last thing is I always try and play in the key that I'm going to be transitioning into. So I'm thinking ahead to think if I'm playing an extra song and I'm going to be playing it in the key of A, I don't want to be playing in the key of C sharp before that because it's going to be a bit of an awkward transition. So play something that people can play along to as well that if anyone has to join in. So if for some reason the band is needing to, you know, the meeting leader says, let's sing that song. You're kind of already there and you're not having to stop and start and have this awkward transition. Just think ahead so that you're wherever possible, you're in the key that you need to be in. So a couple of progressions that I would find myself playing a lot would be a 6, 4, 1 over 3, 5. Now, if you don't know the number system, I suggest you learn it because it's going to make these kind of moments so much easier for you. It makes it easy for your MD as well to be able to say whatever key you're playing in, a 6, 4, 1, 5 works. So if I'm in the key of A, 6, 4, 1, 5 is the F sharp. Now, F sharp minor. Now in, in this, I'm going to just play in my right hand, E, A, E. And I'm going to keep that for this whole progression. And I'm just going to change the bass notes in my left hand. So the six to the D, C sharp, which is A over C sharp. And then I'm playing E. Now I've, I normally, I like, I like a, a good sus note. So I'm going to add the sus five in. And that's the, but all I've added is the B. And then the rest of it is actually limited movement. But it still sounds really nice. Now I could play that same progression and if I was playing it that I'm jumping around, it's not going to sound that great. So I could play it here, F sharp minor, D, and then to the E. Now it kind of sounds a little bit disjointed because it's not as flowy. So as soon as you're limiting your movement in your right hand, it's gonna flow a lot better. And you can also build on it because you can start playing, I always find myself playing hooks if I'm trying to build something. I'm still playing the same notes. And all I'm changing is my left hand. And then I can pull it back at any time. So six, four, one over three, five works every time. You can do it in any key and it's still gonna work. Another one that I'd play a lot would be four, five, one over three, four, which let's just do it in the same key. So we're still in A. So your four is your D. Your five, I'd probably play a sus, which is your E over C sharp. 
And then let's just say, for argument's sake, I add, I just change it slightly and I add the F sharp in the bass note in the right hand. But notice how my right hand is hardly moving. It's kind of almost like it's locked in position. And basically, you're just going to add a great atmosphere to whatever's happening in the service. So um, the other one that I would play a lot, if you're wanting to um, start on something that's a little bit brighter, you could start on a 1-4-6-4, uh, or you could do, you know, 1-4-1-3-4. I mean, there's so many options, but let's just, oh, I'm going to transition to the key of D. And again, like, I mean, adding extensions always works really easily, but for this one, let's just say I'm going to keep the A and the D, G, but I'm keeping the right hand, A over D, B minor, A over D, back to the G. So again, I'm hardly moving, I'm not moving my right hand at all. And then you can start just adding, I mean, we're going to work on dynamic lifting soon, but you can. So it's really easy when you've got a base of notes that work, just find the notes that work over every chord and then you can start adding and shifting like one or two notes, but essentially your hand stays in the same position so that you're not moving very much at all. The only other thing I'd say is if you're playing behind announcement music, um, obviously, you're probably not really looking for the peaceful, anointing kind of vibe in that moment. You want a little bit of movement so that you're having fun. Um, so one thing that always works for me, and if you're at Oxford Falls, you're going to hear this, uh, is the dance floor changes. Uh, so if I'm in A, keeping the right hand exactly the same. It's just the timing. So all I'm doing is moving the timing. I wouldn't play this behind an altar call moment necessarily because it's got a lot of movement and I may not necessarily want like a lot of the chord movements. Um, but behind an announcement, it kind of keeps it a little bit flowy and a little bit moving, which is always a good thing because you don't want announcements to kind of go like that because that's never a good moment. But you want it to have the atmosphere style and you want it to still keep flowing. Uh, so maybe add a little bit more movement into, into that sort of thing. But those changes will work in any chord progression that you're looking for and always provide a great atmosphere. So just keep in mind, don't move your right hand too much. Just add little subtle changes and keep it in the lower register and you're going to have a great service.